everybody, uh, I'm Alfred, and welcome back to Friday Night Roguelikes. Um, partially inspired from last week, I'm playing another SCP game. This is a game called SCP-087-B. It is based off a different uh, SCP game, which is just called 087. The original um, SCP is exactly what the game depicts it as. It is an infinite, endless staircase. And you can see that it's extremely dark. Now, I had to fucking open a notepad to get this game to run in a window. Like, you start, you, you, you download the game. Oh. So, like, you download the game, and everything comes in a little folder. And in that folder is this little notepad that says options, and you have to go in, and uh, windowed says true, or a run full screen says true, and you have to like physically type it in and replace true with false. Uh, you can also change the speed of the character that way. So this is um, a horror experience that, you know, this is this is a pretty standard horror experience. Um, it works in VR. It works in uh, in other games. You know, just. The, the weight, you know? It's a lot of sizzle, but not a lot of steak. You know what I mean? Because the, the droning, almost breathy soundtrack is... It's creepy. Um, the occasional weird breaks in it are strange, but not really that weird. The fact that you have to hug... Because, like, I'll go stand in the middle of a room here. Okay, yeah, I'm in the middle of the room now. It's just black. I might have just poked my mouse pad there. Um, I play on a laptop because I don't currently have a full tower. Um, and so sometimes I'll touch the side of my uh, the little the little pad you have on your laptop while I'm also using a mouse. Minor details. But anyway, yeah, I, I have chosen to see this game as a roguelike, but I also just wanted to get some variety of spooky games in. As I mentioned, um, I'm not going to be doing Friday Night Roguelikes for too, too much longer. I wanted to make like 30 episodes, maybe. Um, I plan on stopping it by December. Actually, if, if the first week of... No, if the first day of the new year is a Friday, I'll have one more video. And that'll be the first video of 2021. But yeah, in uh, October, I just I like playing a variety of scary games, and this, as I mentioned, is a very very classic example. There's a uh, lot of VR games that work like this. Oh, 14. Now it's getting weird. I'll go left because I'm a lefty. These choices apparently do matter, though it might just be random the whole way through. Um, so yeah, I've seen someone build a, uh, a horror experience like this in Minecraft where you're just going down this big long staircase, you have blindness and slowness on and, uh, creepy things jump out at you. Um, it's kind of analogous to PT as well, because PT is a thing where you go through a semi-static area repeatedly. And things will change every time. And PT kind of created its own like mini... How do I put this? Mini um, genre, I suppose, of, of horror games. Because when PT got taken off the uh, PlayStation Store, which I will explain in a moment, it left this void. But yeah, PT was originally short for Playable Trailer, and it was going to be Kojima's new take on Silent Hill. And that was going to be, that was the demo for the game's Silent Hills. However, um, because the company, Konami, are run by the Yakuza. That was that wasn't scary. Were people really scared of this game? There's like a pillowcase with like lipstick on it. But anyway, oh, oh, we got another one. Someone eating a big old slice of watermelon. You know, it got stuck in their it got stuck in their craw in their lips. Gave him a big old Cheshire smile. What happens if I go in this corner, huh? 
What you gonna do then? Um, I'm umming a lot. I've uh, I've bitten my lip, so it's bleeding a little bit. So you might hear me, you know, a little. It's probably creepier than the game is. Um. Anyway, yeah, there I go again. PT was gonna be that, but Konami, the company, is really uh, a toxic video game creating company and they've just squandered so much talent um and devoted so much time on projects that really don't inspire confidence in their business decisions oh it's the pillowcase man and the game crashes um normally i would put a cut here but um i've decided to not to I've also put Karu in the background because uh, this game doesn't run in a full fucking screen because why would it? And it's like obnoxiously cut off no matter how you do. I think it's working. Eh? Yeah, okay, that's working. But anyway, Kojima was willing to, you know, emulate his contemporaries when he made PT, and that was presumably going to go into the full project, uh, product of Silent Hills, which is going to be the the second reboot of Silent Hill. Yeah, the second reboot. Since Silent Hill Shattered Memories is technically a reboot, it's uh, called a reimagining, but you know, it's kind of a reboot. But yeah, um, there's a lot of theories that indicate that Konami, the video game company, might actually be run by the Yakuza, which is why they're more interested in making Pachinko, which is a type of uh, Japanese gambling arcade machine, and games for your phone, because they like to prey on people who play phone games. I, I legitimately heard the story the other day about this guy who was going through a divorce settlement with his wife because the guy had spent $300,000 on Clash of Clans. I'll go right this time. It blew my mind. It was crazy. And I was like, well, yeah, someone has to buy, like, I guess someone would buy that much. He was like a big executive and like he technically could afford it, but it was like such a gross misuse of funds that she ended up like wanting to divorce and leave him because she, she was just like, nah, that's, it's wild, man. Those were the only details I got. I went right that time. So I'll go left this time. It's like a multiple choice test chest. Jesus Christ. Ah. Well. Yeah, normally I would have the boo doo ba doo ba doo. Uh, my roguelike transition music is from uh, Crypt of the Necro Dancer, by the way, which I might. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to playing. I'm not sure if I'm going to do another horror game next week. Because um, obviously it is near the end of the month now as you're seeing this. Uh, not for me, but, you know, for you guys it is. But yeah, it's near the end of the month and I'm not done with a lot of the scary games uh, or the other games that started. But, you know, if I start a game, I usually finish it. The only one, the only LP I haven't finished is Pokemon Uranium. And it's just because that game has been such a pain in the ass to record. I do want to go back and play it, but like, it's a hassle, you know? Okay, so what happens if I do that again? So I went right again creeping along here okay stairs down do 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 yeah pt uh pt vanishing meant that there were a lot of copycats and like it was less egregious because like when slender came out fucking everyone copied slender and almost none of them were as good but a few of them were better. But no one talked about those. Because they didn't have the brand recognition of Slender. Okay, so it is the same pit. So is this game actually random? Or is it just acid reuse? Tricking me into thinking that it's random. Trixie, Trixie. 
and like when the actual official sequel to the uh, to the actual original Slender came out, it disappointed like everyone. This just wasn't as good. Creeping down. You know, does the SCP Foundation specifically make their radios to have maximum fear effect? Because right now I'm I'm listening to a demon grunt into my ear and I'm really not seeing too much of a difference from the normal transmissions I've been getting. It just, you know, it's kind of just old hat by now. Sorry, but... I've never been one to jump at games. Um, sometimes I will quit a game just because of the oppressive atmosphere, but I haven't done that in years. Um, I originally quit playing Silent Hill 2 because of that. I quit playing this shitty game called Singularity because of that. Um, it's probably because, it's probably why I didn't see too much of this game. So now I'll go right again. Well, you know what? Right was right last few times. Oh, here we go. Great, so I'll go left, left. Right, right, left, left, that's the path. Oh, does this actually connect? See, I kind of imagine that that thing spawns. It looks like it does connect. Weird. I kind of imagine that that thing spawns behind me and chases me. And so, like, it adds this semi-unnecessary ticking clock element to the whole game. Because, like, oh, you got to get down there. Got to go deeper. Yeah, I don't exactly know the details of... 087. I'll probably look them up while I'm recording. But I imagine that it's just a creepy staircase where monsters live. I mean, Christ, I could probably play this game one-handed, just strafing. Not that this is the typical game I would use my ability to play games one-handed on, but, you know. Man with candle open his mouth and pillow face man are truly formidable opponents. Oh. We got, we got, we, we spoke of cantaloupe mouth man and he appeared. See, cause the, the smile is just so grotesque and large that it almost becomes comical. It looks as though someone has a slice of melon, you know, like a watermelon or a cantaloupe stuck in their mouth as though they were like a Tom and Jerry cartoon, forcing their lips into this exaggerated smile. And it, it's, it's just this specific thing. I don't know if it's just me, but sometimes you can go too far with horror, you know? And sometimes that extreme shock value works. I had a very, very long argument conversation with my friends. I looked away to look at my phone. Did something happen? I had a very long argument conversation with my friends about Outlast and how Outlast uses horror. Um, and Outlast is very good about its imagery. The first Outlast is. Um, it has this uh, particularly memorable and grotesque scene, either in the game or the DLC, where... Uh, a a psychopath obsessed with creating life and you know having sex and having a wife to give birth to someone mutilates men. I'll go right this time. Mutilates men and makes them look like women. Like he mutilates their genitals until it appears that they have a vagina. And every uh. Oop. And every um, character in the game is very intentionally a, like, stereotypical cis man for, you know, reasons of that, to, to tease out emotions like that. And there's this very, very grotesque scene where you see the, the fruits of his labors, as it were, where he's twisted and mutilated and really just hacked and cut this body until it looks like it has a vagina. And uh, there's a human head crowning, you know, emerging from the vagina as though it were like a human baby. Oh, pillow face, man. Um, and it's very grotesque and it's very creepy. It's authentically gross. It's disgusting in a way that's handled pretty well, I think. Uh, Outlast 2 has this big pit of dead babies. So I'm going to I'm going to go here and I'm going to change some stuff around. So brightness says 40 here. What happens if I make this 80? Yeah, zero is darkest. 
and 255 is brightest. So what happens if I change those values from 40 to 80? And what if I change character speed from 20 to 50? And then I hit save. Uh-huh. Oh my god, hashtag game changer. Look at me go. <laughs> oh, this is funny. This is this is this is comical now. The render distance is still very, very slight, but I can book it, you know? How high can I make it go? The light values are capped at 255, because you know that's a important factor when it comes to binary. And it outright says, you know, it caps at 255. But how high can I make the speed go? I hope I can push it to the point where it's like, it's hard to control. Like I'm, I'm having to like aim my character down the next tunnel. I hope that's where we get to. I, I would be very happy with that. Wow, I really because I didn't actually do any research, and I know that um, SCP Containment Breach and a lot of the contemporaries, like Secret Laboratory and the the Unity remake of Containment Breach, those are all obviously roguelikes. Like they even have a seed to generate different maps, and I assume that this game would be as well. Was that a man next to me? I thought it was just the weird render distance, but the music says that that was supposed to be something scary. Like it inter it interrupted me. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Were you were you talking? Do, 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 I had a train of thought earlier. And I totally lost it. Kind of pissed about it. Oh, yeah, I was talking about Outlast. Um, so, yeah, Outlast 1. There's another excellent scene in Outlast 1 where you find a room full of people that have been tied by their shoulders and ankles and suspended uh, in, like, a basketball court. Oh, pillow face man. All right. Let's let's keep pushing this. Brightness to maximum. Now, can I make player speed go to 500 without breaking the game? Oh my god, it's like a real video game. You can see. Oh my god, look at how oppressive the shading is. Cuz even when it's dark like it just has such a low render distance. Oh Oh, God. <laughs> okay, that is too fast. Let's dial that down. Let's go with 200. Chuck oofka. There we go. But yeah, Outlast 1 and 2 were very, very good about their, their imagery. You know, they, they were able to use grotesque stuff in a very smart way. And Outlast 2 just has this inexplicable fucking pit of dead babies. Okay, if you go too fast, you hit your forehead on the on the roof and die. Oh, whoops. Okay, so let's dial that down. I'll just go with 80. Oh, I need to eat. I forgot to eat again. Damn it. I always do this. But yeah, childbirth and shit is like an important part of Outlast 2 because uh, pregnancy is scary. Haven't seen this a million times, especially in Bloodborne, which came out. Oh, that's interesting. Something going to pop out and scare me there? See, because it's so fucking dark, I wouldn't even notice that. Boo. See, I'm scaring him now. He doesn't even know what's up. I feel like this is kind of ruining the spirit of the game. The fact that there's just this like empty yawning hole in the in the halls is kind of cool because it means that oh so by walking too fast do I generate noise because I don't think I hit my head on the ceiling there. Let's turn my speed back down to f let's go to 40. It's a reasonable amount. 
Also, I know it's like allegedly spooky or some shit, but like it's kind of tacky when you. Oh my god, I'm been, I've been handicapped now. Like a golf handicap. I don't mean to make fun of player par, paraplegic people. Pardon me, my speech impediment's getting the better of me. Hey, uh, Alfred, why'd you, uh, why do you keep investing in jobs wherein you have to talk if you have a speech impediment? Well, I'm fucking stupid. Anyway, I keep getting away from this pit of dead babies. We gotta, we gotta circle back around and talk about this fucking pit of dead babies. There's like 500 babies in this pit. It, it's like a big pit. It's like the size of a kiddie pool, right? And it is full with with dead babies, like really small, like newborns. How do they get that many? Like, based on how this game has been shown to like be treating, oh, it was right this time, so maybe it is random. But like, based on how this game, you know, treats its women, which is, you know, unfavorably, Uh, and granted, that's a story thing. It's not just the writers being shitty. I mean, they are being shitty, but not. They, they, they think that they think they're being smart about it. Um, but yeah, they are just preying on like medieval ideas of oh no, I'm a woman who does not wish to be pregnant, and I am. How scary, you know. Um. I'm not going to beat this game, am I? So, somehow, there were enough pregnant women in this village where pregnant women aren't treated very well to give birth to babies numbering into the hundreds. Oh, we got the face there. Cantaloupe face. See, it's, it's like a Cheshire cat. Um, <laughs> okay, that kind of startled me, but only because he jerked like like his his model was being dropped in like in Gmod. I feel like that's not exactly intended. But then again, I am fucking with like I have broken the seal off of this game. I can't get my warranty back. If I wanted to refund this free game, this game is free by the way, and you can play it if you wish. If I wanted a free refund for this game, I wouldn't get it. Anyway, not only were so many women pregnant this like to give birth to that many babies, but they were all pregnant at the same time and delivered around the same time. Boo. What should I do then? I guess I should walk backwards, right? Um, do do do, reopen it cuz this is a good way to design your game. I know it's scary to have the game crash to desktop or whatever, but it's just kind of a hassle. On the other hand, maybe it's just a, like a thing where they didn't even program a game over screen. Like this game is so rudimentary in its code that it's it doesn't even have the ability to show you game over. You have lost. You know, it, it like it, it doesn't even show you a desk screen because there isn't one. Oh yeah. Also, despite the fact that the religion in Outlast Two revolves around uh, like giving birth to the Messiah slash Antichrist. It's weird how often those things overlap. Um, despite the fact that the religion is based around that, they didn't, like, think of a better way to dispose of their babies dis like, besides just, like, putting them all into this really big hole. Oh, hold on. That might have been something. Oh, that's fun. I heard the brick sliding and I was like, did a thing open? But a thing closed. Doo, doo, doo. Okay. We'll just stand here for a sec. Okay. Okay. I, I was pulling up the page for uh, 087 that I will read when I'm done bitching about Outlast 2. Um, despite the fact that the the danger is real and present and not metaphorical, for some reason there's still like flashbacks to the main character's time in Catholic school, 
where his best friend was killed and raped by a, uh, a creepy priest. You know, as though this was like a, a Silent Hill game. Like, I, I don't even want to downplay the big, stupid, giant, dead baby pit. That's something I, I, I want to, you know, I don't want to diminish that. That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in a horror game. I'm thinking. Because there's Pyramid Head showing... <laughs> he just fucking falls out of the sky like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> like, it's scary because there's no warning or lead up to it. It's it's literally just boo. <laughs> Why does he have a little smiley face? It's so silly. <laughs> anyway, so in Outlast 2, I know that this has turned into me bitching about Outlast 2, but there's not a lot to fucking talk about with this game. You're just going down a staircase. Yeah, it's got a kind of creepy atmosphere, but fuck, man, I'm only one guy. Such as it is. Got to keep that branding consistent, though. So, yeah, um... Because there weren't enough cliches, there's a Catholic priest. Uh, he's a pedophile and a weird molester rapist guy. Um, main character has PTSD about stuff in his childhood. Because only interesting things only happen to you in childhood. You know? It, it's, that, it's that Freudian shit of childhood's the only part that really matters. And everything is built then. And everything after that is just clean up. Like, dude, people have full lives. You can live a life after being a child. I don't know if people know this, like writers. And, like, the, the game kind of goes back and forth. And at some points it just leaves for so long at, uh... Oh, we got the bricks. Da bricks. Sometimes the game just lets you uh, remember being a child for so, so long that I feel like they wanted to make two different games. Like, those could have been two DLCs to the original Outlast. But they're like, no, put these together because we want to sell at full price and make more money. Of course, Red Barrels, uh, the company that uh, produces Outlast. I don't know if um, Red Barrels really makes, really sells games at full price. They might just sell it at, like you know, at a discount no matter what. Like, it comes out and it's 30 bucks. But still, you know what I mean. They're an indie developer. Um, boo! See, he just he just pops up and he strikes a little pose. You notice how his feet, his, his legs were? He was like, yeah. <laughs> He's like Waluigi. Wearing the mask from, like, what is that fucking anime? Darker Than Black? It's the dude who's on all the fucking, like, Nightcore, like, videos he's the thumbnail of every nightcore video ever i could probably fucking just find a picture of it oh we got the face after i finish my big outlast bitch fit i'm gonna take a small break and and play my little my, my little music but then it'll be right back to bitching Um, anyway, because there aren't enough cliches in this story. So should I run this way now? Oh, I'm getting after him. It just is spooky. Um, because there aren't enough dumb cliches, uh, the, the priest then murders uh, the main character's friend. And uh, this creates, you know, traumatic memories for him later in the game when his wife dies. Because men can't have character development unless a woman dies. Obviously. Alice 2 is such a fucking disappointment. Disappointed me. And everyone. We were all rooting for it. Anyway. Um, there's this really silly scene that I feel is just an homage to The Shining. Where uh, you're in the school, you're having one of those child flashbacks, and it starts to get really nightmarish. And... Uh, you're being stalked by a nightmare monster that is a artistic representation of the the priest that raped and killed your friend. And like, yeah, this game can be Silent Hill now, you know. Every game needs a every horror game needs a pyramid head, apparently. Sometimes it's just pyramid head. 
So now I go backwards? What? <laughs> oh my god, that's so silly. <laughs> like, he's mid-step, you know? He's like, yeah, da, da, it's me. I'm the little smiley face, little small faced man. Hello. Boo. Anyway, so, um, yeah, you're getting chased by this thing, and then, like, blood starts to pour out of the doors and windows in the school. Ooh, spooky. And see, there's so much trailing after images that you can't fucking see shit. Oh, he's still in there. Go away. I'm trying to walk forward, bro. Maybe I should just... Maybe I'll just go backwards. What's he gonna do about it? Anyway, blood pours everywhere. In the, in the school, in the big dumb memory. And, uh... That doesn't make any sense because the crime was bloodless. Oh, we got spooky distorted voices. Those were all the rage when this game came out. Like, I can't remember if the game was called I'm Scared or if it was something different. I think Markiplier played it, like, probably, like, eight years ago by now. But, uh, it just had this obnoxious voice distortion that was supposed to be scary, but it just sounded really shrill and irritating. Fucking hysterical, but not scary at all. Maybe I'll start going back down now. Mix it up, you know? What if he took his little shortcut back up there? Didn't expect me to already start going back down. He thought I would go until I hit a brick wall. I've played him. He's the fool. Also, because they're over here, you got to look at them specifically, the, the numbers on the wall. I want to go back to Outlast 2 now. Um, so yeah, Outlast 2, uh, you have this like traumatic memory involving all the blood that was spilled in the murder, where it all like spills all over your body and all over the school and stuff. But uh, that woman was killed, well, girl, I guess, because she was underage. But uh, the, the priest killed that person by hanging them, which is a, you know, a, a bloodless way of murder, because it's you know, asphyxiation or breaking the neck or internal bleeding. It doesn't cause any blood. So the reason that all the blood is there is just to be fucking scary. Like, boo, ah, it's blood. So should I go forward? Look at him. He's striking his little pose. You can see it. Oh, I can go for it. I just got to keep my eyeballs on him, my peepers. But now that means that he's behind, that, that means that he's behind me, which isn't fantastic. But, you know, I don't really care. I have no stakes in this game. Do, 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 do. This fucking... I feel like I'm drunk looking at all the fucking frames trailing. Like, it, it is it is a disorienting effect. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Because, like, this is a free, very simple horror game. But, you know, you can strive for excellence in everything. Even, you know, dumb shit. Like, I'm still... I'm a, I'm a firm believer that children's television and other children's media can still and should still be smart because um you know kids can understand more than we give them credit and dumbing shit down for them is needless and really just dumbs them down and we should strive for that excellence in everything we do even horror games you know stuff shouldn't be included just because it's it's disorienting or scary or some shit it should be in there because it works not because people think it's scary Silent Hill 2 is a, has almost no jump scares and it is still one of the best horror games of all time not as good as Silent Hill 3 but Silent Hill 2 is the one that I use as an example um boo yeah I got startled I jerked the mouse but that's the extent of it like, is it supposed to be like a hanged man jumping down on you? Because I've been running into that in Cry of Fear. Um, I don't think those episodes will have come out yet, but... Hey, in a game about suicide, someone hangs themselves. Fucking spoiler. Speaking of hang, let's go back to LS2 for a few more bitches. The original game was like it because... Oh, now it's in front of me. 
Clever girl. You know what? I'm actually done bitching about Alice 2. I'm going to take a short break, and I'll come right back, and I'm going to play with one hand while I read the uh, wiki page for this thing. Be right back. And we're back. Let me just get this game open again. Because remember, games can't be scary unless they crash to the desktop every time you have a game over. Um, and I just have fucking whatever over there. I had Koru because he brings me joy. Now I've got soy because, I don't know. I saved a picture of soy milk for some reason. So let's uh, let's take a look at uh, 087B. I hope this is the right way also. Oh, 12. <laughs> Whoops. Let me just get that shit open again. Remember, can't be scary unless you crash the desktop. Alright, so, oh, it's 7B. This is a Euclid thing, which means that you can, it's not, like, evil, but it, it, it's bad shit, but it's not, like, gonna end the world. It could if it's, you know, let's go left this time. Damn. Unlucky draw. Might have to use two hands. Guess I'll turn my mouse back on. At least for this first bit, maybe they were getting wise to my bullshit. Uh, yeah, it's located on the campus of Redacted. Because remember, SCP articles can't be scary unless you write Redacted everywhere. The fact that I don't know where it is is the only thing holding this story together. It is the glue that keeps this narrative flowing. Ignore how glue makes something flow. That is, again, I, I complained about it last week, but that was actually months ago for me. Um, but yeah, I complained about it last week, but they just fucking put black ink everywhere. It's, it's obnoxious at some points. Oh, do I see a face back there? The, the putting the face ahead of you is kind of interesting. Um, it's kind of a tacky thing. Cause it's, it's just obviously slapping the texture down there. Okay. Uh... The doorway leading to H7 is constructed of reinforced steel. It's got a big fucking lock. It looks like a janitor's closet. That's funny. It won't unlock unless blankety blank volts are applied in conjunction with counterclockwise, yada, 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 yada. Do the results of the final exploration. Uh, no personnel are permitted access to this thing. It's an unlit platform staircase. Stairs descend in a 38 degree angle for 13 steps before... Oh, 13. That's a scary number. Uh, before reaching a semicircular platform of 3 meters in diameter. I mentioned it last week, but I love... I, I still love when people are just petty. And they're like, oh, it's supposed to be all in meters now? Okay, it'll be 3.3 .3 repeating meters. Because I'm a fucking American and I have to ruin everything. Um, descent... Direction rotates 180 degrees each platform. So this, this is just the blueprint of this game right here, isn't it? That's kind of clever, I guess. It Because this, this source material, because the SCP Foundation is originally just a bunch of wiki pages written as though they're about a thing that is real. But it's it, it does work, you know? As, as a source material for a video game, I think that, that it does work pretty well. Um, a light source is required. Well, that's what I've got here. I've got cheats. Uh, lighting sources brighter than 75 watts have been shown to be ineffective as SCP-087 absorbs excess light. That's kind of funny. Oh, something scary is happening. <laughs> I missed it. Uh, subjects report audio... Subjects report... And audio recordings confirm distress vocalizations from what's presumed to be a child between the ages of blank and blank. Um, what's nice about that one is that you can see that the first number is a single digit and the second number is a double digit. So it is a child. They're between single digit ages, damn it, and double digits. Which is kind of an interesting twist on it because it allows you to glean some information, but it still maintains the 
you know, obscuring nature of the the wiki. Source of Distressed is estimated to be located 200 meters bef- below initial platform. Any attempts to descend this staircase have failed to bring subject closer to the source. Depth of descent calculated from Expiration 4, the longest one, shown to be far beyond the possible structure of both the building and geological surroundings. So, yeah, this is a weird Eldritch Cthulhu location where, like, it, it is impossibly steep for a staircase. It goes down longer than the planet would allow, much less the building, which makes sense. At this time, it is unknown if 087 has an endpoint. Interesting, because I know that you can beat this game. Uh, 087 has undergone four video recorded explanations by Class D. Each subject uh, conducting an exploration encountered 0871, which appears as a face with no pupils, nostrils, or mouth. Oh, I guess that's Pillowcase Face Man. And there's a picture of 0871. Um, nature of 0871 is unclear, but it has been determined it's not the source of the pleading. Subjects exhibit feelings of intense paranoia and fear when faced with it, uh, but are it's undetermined whether said feelings are abnormal or natural reactions. I guess that's fair. Because when you're dealing with Eldritch Cthulhu and shit like this, there's no guarantee that stuff isn't manipulating your feelings. But sometimes, you know, fear is the appropriate response. It is the smart thing to be afraid of it. That's why we have fear. All emotions have a purpose, even the bad ones, you know? It's important to remember at all times. Also, I could just really fucking play this game with my nose. Just slamming my big fucking fat face into this keyboard. I could play this game like this. No one could stop me either. It would be the optimal way to play because I wouldn't be able to see the screen and I would never be scared. Not that I get scared anyway, but hey, if you're scared of this game, why don't you just smash your fucking face into it? Show dominance, you know? I moved it with a trackpad. I actually turned off my mouse to save battery, if you can believe it. Uh, Two weeks following Exploration 4, several members of the staff and students from the campus reported knocking at a variable rate of 1 to 2 seconds per knock coming from the interior of 087. The door leading to 087 has been fitted with 6 centimeters thick of industrial padding. All reports of knocking have ceased. Is that because they stopped or because we can't hear them anymore? I suppose that's kind of cool. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Good thing I played the game with more than one hand. Well, with uh, with my thumb on my mouse pad. Does this think of a name? Because on, on the on the computers where they have the little red nub mouse, the the rubber little mouse in the middle of the keyboard, you know, you you got your nub mouse there. I don't know if is it called a trackpad. And then there's uh, three stories and then one where it says data expunged because you can't, it's got to be secret, yada, yada. I've already bitched about this. Uh, this is class D8432, 43-year-old Caucasian man of average build, unremarkable psychological background, yada, yada, et cetera. It's a random fucking guy. Class D, you know, it's the slave labor that the Institute employs to get shit done and they're the good guys. I I don't know if I bitched about Class D enough in the other uh, in the other game, but like they similar to how Halo has like this thing where you can read it as the writers have like this fetish for military spending. You can almost read um, SCP Wiki with the idea that the authors have this fetishization of like prison industrial complex and slave labor and like almost having a scorecard of how many class D that their, their OC killed. Cause like, fuck, they just love throwing class D at everything. Uh, the guy says it's fucking dark. Dr. Redacted. Great. I wonder who, oh, oh, fuck asks if the flood lamp is working. The D class shines the light. The light reaches further. It's working. It just won't light the stairs all the way down. That's interesting. So what I assume to be bad coding and, you know, kryptonite fog is actually an intentional part of the gameplay based off of the source material. So that's interesting. 
Ah, hello, Potato Face Man. Oh, he slides at you. That's interesting. Right, I'm going to read this a little more. Uh, he hears a kid. Explains it's young, either female or young boy. Boy saying, please. The D class says that it's like 200 meters down. Child says, please help and down here. They go down a total of 22 flights. The D-Class realizes that he's not getting any closer to the kid. They look at the audio where it confirms that it's still the same. <laughs> um, the D-Class says that he feels uneasy and the doctor actually says that... Uh, it's natural to feel that way because he's been in a very creepy place, which is kind of funny. Uh, he's been going down to a total of 50 flights. The flood lamp illuminates the, the, the face that we've been seeing. The guy starts swearing. The doctor very calmly asks, can you describe what you see, please? Uh, the D-class says, some sort of fucking person face thing and it's fucking looking right at me. Fuck, fuck, fuck. It's looking at me. Is it moving? No, it's just staring at me. Fuck, fuck, fuck. It's creepy. Please approach and further illuminate the entity. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I don't want to fucking... The face jerks forward about 50 centimeters directly towards the D-class. D-class. Fuck. Yelling. Fuck, 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 fuck. Redacted. <laughs> what? D-class enters a panic state and rapidly ascends. He reaches the ground floor in 18 minutes, at which time he collapses and passes out. There's no sign of 01. Uh, of 0871 review the footage indicates an equal number of flights and steps ascending as descending so it is consistent going both ways audio the crying and pleading remains at the same volume till last flight at which point it ceases medical reports indicate the collapse was a result of rapid ascension of the stairs causing fatigue i'll skim the next one <sighs> why do they why do they mention this sometimes D9035 is a 28-year-old African-American male of a strong build. Psychological background indicates no abnormalities except an extreme hatred for women. Sometimes I just don't know why they fucking mention them. And they wrote the guy with a quote ghetto unquote accent. There's a creepy slash mark in the wall. Uh, he sees the face. And he enters a catatonic state that he has not since recovered from. Uh, D-class 9884 is a 23-year-old female of average build and appearance. Psychological background indicates a history of depression. Uh, yada yada yada. They gave her a camping bag. That's nice. The girl complains about um a smell and that it smells bad and it's sticky and stuck to her shoe. It smells like rusty metal and pee. She mentions there's a hole she almost fell in. And then uh, they describe the, the face staring into the camera and being all creepy. But that doesn't really work because, like, doing creepy things to the camera barely works in a horror movie. Because in a horror movie, like, the camera's not supposed to exist. The camera's not supposed to be there. You know, it's, it's just supposed to be the, the medium that people are experiencing this through. Um, oh, you might be able to hear my uh, hunger stomach growling. And so the, the character staring into the camera and, you know, being creepy, it's just kind of silly. Because it's not actually, it doesn't actually make any sense. So, you know, there's that. And then we got um, this, where there isn't even a camera for them to goof off into. 
Um, so yeah, overall, it's an all right game. Uh, I liked to use it as an example to talk about good horror, uh, how shitty Outlast is, how sad I am about PT, and uh, to complain about the SCP Wiki some more. Um, I've been out for this. has been SCP-087-B. You are free to download it. It's made by the same people who made last week's game, and both of them are very solid. Obviously, there's some shenanigans in that game that I don't know if I would really, really recommend playing it. Um, but the other one is obviously very, very solid. So, you know, make your own judgments. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Next time, I will probably be playing a normal, relatively normal roguelike. Uh, but until then, I've been Alfred. This has been Friday Night Roguelikes. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.